awaiting orders. Oh, action, not reaction. Oh, I have the magic touch. Careful, I might. Can't give up now. saw Gortash, didn't you? What the fuck was he doing down there? Is all of this because of him? The tadpole, the absolute. How? I never have protected a Bainite even a decade ago. I looked after that fucker with my life. I trusted him. He gave me away to Zariel without a second thought. And now he's looking to ruin the entire Sword Coast. He has to die. And I'm gonna be the one who kills him. with what he's done to me, to us. He won't get away with it. We should not linger here. The cult's army is on the I can't help but feel like I've been fumbling in the dark for too long. And I've just had a lit torch thrust into my hands. Brain was wearing. The one I very nearly destroyed. Netherese magic. So pure, so complete. I didn't even recognize it at first. Most Netherese artifacts contain only the faintest amount of their former power. The ghost of an echo of a memory. That crown was different. I can't fathom how such a wonder survived. Surely everything of its ilk was destroyed along with Netheril itself, but. No matter, it exists. I must learn more of it. That crown sits on a gargantuan elder brain bent on destroying us and everything we hold dear. Understanding its true nature might unlock the means of our victory. We need to learn more about what we saw. An artifact as powerful as that crown must have been documented somewhere. As luck would have it, we'll soon find ourselves near one of the finest book collections this side of Candlekeep, Sorcerer's Sundries. I need to go there and learn all I can. The only kind I have, their collection of rare tomes is unparalleled. <laughs> Nethery sex are hardly commonplace, but I'm certain they'll have one or two stashed away. You'll have to forgive my eagerness, but if my suspicions prove to hold water, this could be the answer to all our problems. Aelin! Oh. Isabel! My love, you are dead. I saw your body. I'm here. And... and so are you. And my father, he... He can't hurt us any longer. I dreamt every night that you'd come back to me. That somehow it was all a nightmare Dawn would undo. No dreams at all. Nothing but darkness. And when I woke, my father said you were dead. 
His soul was poisoned by the god of death. His sick devotion ruined him. But for all his sins, he brought you back to me. Are you all right? I will be. And you? In this moment, I want for nothing. that freed me most valiantly from the Shadowfell. They watched my boot crush the very brain of villainy and fought well against your changed father. May he rest in peace at last, now that he's dead. I have more to thank you for than I knew. And we have much to discuss. Perhaps we could join you in your camp later? We look forward to it. You there, Sharon. By the fires of your camp's hearth, we will discuss all we must. I'll be ready. Whatever you have to say had better be worth your life. Now you will leave us. We must take succor in one another's bodies and words. Aelin! We'll see you later. Make a fine fist. We should not linger. I will never tire of sitting on dead men's thrones. During my time in the cult, I came to know one of his co-conspirators all too well. Baal's blood letter, Orin. To think, I thought her to be speaking for the absolute. I worshipped that woman. Jealous? You needn't be. When Orin is in my hands, her agony will nourish me. She is the Iblis who indoctrinated me with the Absolute's lies. She is fierce, vicious, and cruel. In those respects, <laughs> We are alike, but she is dangerously unpredictable. If there is a way to turn this design towards slaughter, rather than control, she will take it. She is the one who brought me to Moonrise, and into the presence of her so-called God, the Absolute. Now I know that those memories are lies. There was no god. Orin held me down in a cocoon of flesh, while a mind flayer forced a parasite into my brain. And she laughed at my fear. I will find her. I will murder her. And I will smile. Let them think that. There is a short path from savior to ruler. A short and bloody path. I know it well, and we will walk it together. But Baldur's Gate is a mere bauble. We have the chance to see something much greater. Surely you see it. In killing Catherick, we fractured the cult's leadership. When we break the other Chosen and claim their Netherstones, we can take control. Madness 
would be to let the Absolute's potential go to waste. The power of the enslaved Elder Brain could reshape the world. We could reshape the world. There is violence in your future, regardless. With me, you can at least be sure the violence will lead to glory. You are not stupid. When we reach Baldur's Gate and face the other Chosen, you will see that my way is the right one. The Elder Brain is the only thing that has ever managed to change my mind. You're welcome to try. We are bound, then, to travel together, even if we do not yet agree on our ultimate purpose. There is yet one thing about you that troubles me, though. Something I need you to explain. Why come to Moonrise, where the cult's power is strongest? Why not walk away? Drought, famine, and warfare are threats to the world as well. Do you intend to eradicate them? The cult are a threat to you. That is what matters. Now, I am ready to leave this damned place whenever you give the word. The city awaits. You wanted something? Thank you. I think any attempts at comforting me might be in vain just now. But you're sweet to keep me in your thoughts. I'm listening. I'd like the same. more carnal than the smell of a fresh kill. One day, I will achieve ascension, and I will revel in the psalm sung in Flacket's court. Until then, you will be my ecstasy. Copper for your thoughts. He got his claws into me early. I was a wild kid, <laughs> brawling my way through the city. One of my mates got wind of a bit of work guarding some with lots of enemies. <laughs> Seemed like easy money, so I went in for it. He took one look at me and said I was perfect. I liked that. Not like that, you know. Just, it felt like a good fit. I kept him safe and he paid me well. 
Well enough to move into a better neighborhood and put something away for the future. My future. I respected him. Trusted him. And he returned that trust, that respect. His life was in my hands, and I took that seriously. The whole thing with Zauriel happened so fast. I had no idea what had gone down until it was over. One minute I was in Baldur's Gate, a happy, healthy, not quite kid. The next, I was burning up in a Vernus with an engine for a heart. Zariel laughed, said she paid him well for my services. She'd wanted to test her new machine, and he said I'd be able to handle it. He was right. Sometimes I wish he weren't. Evil, evil bastard. I would not linger in this land over long, but whatever your business, I will aid you if I can. You wish to consult me? A disparate collection of vagabonds and strays. Did you have anyone particular in mind? It would have been better for us had she embraced Shah and claimed the power of the goddess. But it is better for Shadowheart to be free of that poisonous influence. They would have you think every whispered word and hidden thought is of value. But it is not so. I have performed a thousand interrogations, squeezing out the most guarded secrets held in heart, mind and soul. I can tell you this. When the trivial parts have been whittled away and I have sifted through what remains, in most cases, a person amounts to nothing at all. He's been deprived of freedom and strong blood for so long that he is addicted to both. While those addictions have their hold on him, he is still a slave. <laughs> no. He is well aware that I would exsanguinate him entirely if he flashed his fangs at me. <sighs> Free. What purpose does he have that does not involve his master? He fears him, he hates him, he dreams of him, and he will either kill him or die trying. Astarian is no more free of Cazador than you or I are free of our tadpoles. He will only be free when Cazador is dead. And that is as it should be. When the time comes, we must hope that he does not only take Cazador's long life, but the power that has sustained him as well. I have encountered few Gith Yankee in my life. Those that I did were raiders. They croaked out pleas for mercy in their alien tongue as they died. Meeting Lazel makes me wish I knew more of their culture. I did. She told me that she has nothing to teach that cannot be learned through observation of her prowess in combat. <sighs> Perhaps she is right. She certainly cuts a striking figure in battle. There is a precision to her ferocity that I admire. 
to one who only sees the surface of things, perhaps. You should look deeper. In spite of her youth, there is a patience and precision in Lacelle's thoughts and actions that I admire. Those qualities will strengthen as she matures. The wizard? No. It is pointless. In my experience, the moment they leave their libraries, wizards have the life expectancy of a gnome in a war. Either the enemy recognizes they are a threat and kills them swiftly, or their curiosity leads them to combust while experimenting with the limits of magic. Our wizard is already in a state of suspended combustion, thanks to that orb between his ribs. <laughs> I suspect it is only a matter of time before he goes up in smoke. I will reserve my social graces for those who might live long enough to appreciate them. I have never known anyone so ferocious and unassailable in battle, and yet so fragile and impermanent in their very being. I often think of mortality as a curse. In time, all that I am and all that I have known and learned will be lost. In time, our cities will be dust. Karlak does not seem to have such anxieties. Perhaps because she cannot afford to. She exists in the moment, and she will burn out and be gone in a moment. <sighs> there is something very beautiful about that. She is intelligent, strong, and capable as both a leader and a fighter. An impressive woman. It is a shame that she devotes all of her talents and experience to the futile cause of the Harpers. Their devotion to preserving balance is pathetic. It is precisely because they are perceived as good that they are so dangerous. Their intentions do more harm to the world than any warmonger could. I take no pleasure in his passing. Whatever faults he may have had, Ketherick was a great leader. Life was crueler to him than death. It is no great wonder that he found his strength in Merkel. I believe he was an honorable man, but the gods used him as their plaything. First, Shah and her sister, then the three behind the Absolute. I sympathize. A meaningless question. If he had killed us and conquered the Sword Coast, I would envy him. As it is, he lost, and I pity him. But I will never forgive him for handing me to Orin. For that, <laughs> I hope Merkel hollows out his bones and lets them be dust. A true soul came to my city preaching a message of togetherness, accompanied by two novices. Menzoberanzen is not fertile ground for such messages. I killed them and hanged their bodies in my garden. Recruited. You could call it that. I intended to wage war on their god and the rest of its presumptive followers. Even as the flesh sagged and sloughed away from their eyeless skulls, their audacity infuriated me. I had to know where they came from. <sighs> and whoever sent them was counting on my curiosity overcoming my caution. Yes. All it took was a simple act of necromancy, and the corpses told me where I needed to strike. 
Moonrise Towers. No. I was prepared for combat, but I intended to strike subtly. As it turned out, to my shame. I was defeated without even drawing my weapon. I came to Moonrise with a retinue of warriors and assassins, the best House Bane Ray had to offer. I expected a battle, but found a fully laden feast table and a welcome befitting a house matron. <sighs> Ketherick expected us, expected me, and I fell for his flattery. I recognize my flaws. Pride is certainly among them. Ketherick proposed an alliance between Moonrise and Menzo Baranzen. I admit I was captivated by him. He invited me to the head of his table as his guest of honor. I was wary, of course. If I had been in his position, the food would have been poisoned. It was not the food I should have been wary of. It was the pale woman at the foot of the table, Orin the Red. We had barely begun to eat when she spoke for the first time. I only caught one word, my name. Then, quick as lightning, she climbed onto the table, a dagger in each hand, and skipped toward me, slicing the throats out of my men as she passed them. Few things frightened me. Orin is one of them. Ketherick held me still. His hand on my shoulder, the grip tight enough to crack the bone. When Orin stood before me, she touched the dagger to my eye, drawing out a tear of blood. I want this one, she said. Ketherick nodded his permission, and I was taken below. You've seen the horrors of the colony. Orin kept me there for days. She forced me to watch as my men were processed. Some for food, others as thralls. And then she placed the tadpole in my eye herself. I deserved it. I was passive. Weak. Proud. You know the rest as well as I do. There were massacres before the Grove. Religious communities, mostly. Those who refused to convert. Then there was you, and now there is freedom. <laughs> Soon there will be vengeance. I'm listening. Well, hello. What can I do for you? here and my father i heard what happened what he'd become by killing him you set him free you set alien free and me a great deal but still some of the details elude me 
Ketherick Thorne is, was, my father. He raised me to serve Saluna as my mother, rest her soul, had wished. He was everything to me, all my life. When an emissary of Saluna came to our little town, we were elated. Dame Aelin, daughter of the Moon Maiden herself. Tell me, do you believe in love at first sight? That's exactly it. And I tell you, I took one look at her and I just knew she was it. Lucky for me, she felt the same way. But my father was skeptical. Aelin is immortal, after all. I understand it's strange. There's an imbalance between us, certainly. But I suppose loving Aelin felt the same as loving myself. It was natural. Then... And... This is where I still need answers. I died. I'm not sure how or why, but all was black, black, black. Next I knew I was being jolted awake. I smelled musty air, I saw shadows. And then my father's face. So changed. So hideously warped. I didn't know that then, but I could see the change in him. He told me we'd be together now, said that Aelin was dead. I couldn't speak, could only run. I found last light within the shadows, made a shelter there, prayed my father wouldn't find me. By the time Jahira came, I'd pieced together just enough to know I'd been dead a hundred years. That my father was the source of the horrors plaguing this land, my home. I couldn't tell her who I was. I had to protect them. And myself. No matter what. It's all out in the open now. And with my father dead, I have nothing to fear. Except for Aelin. She needs healing. Rest. I'm grateful for your help. Your friendship. I hope we won't intrude on your hospitality too long, but I'm grateful for a safe place to, well, just to be. There you are. I have awaited your arrival with great anticipation. Come closer. Feel my voice rattle your bones as I proclaim our victory. Moon Maiden Saluna, hear me. Catherick Thorn, traitor, apostle of Merkel, is dead at last. My mate, Most High. Darling Isabel is safe and well. Safe and well and return to my embrace. Blessings upon the Slayer of the Wicked One. We are a powerful party indeed. Faerun itself trembles at our touch. My darling Isabel says we will stay allied at your side. I am pleased to hear it. Pray, ask, and I will tell. Do I not radiate with my mother's brightness, her glory? There can be no doubt. I am of her silvered flesh, her celestial womb. Why, she already has. She has brought her sword to your side, Dame Aelin. So mighty are her wonders, her great wisdom. Together, we will set this fair land free of tyranny and murder. <sighs> Catherick Thorne, father of my one and only love, enslaver of Dame Aelin. Catherick Thorne never did trust me. 
even when he worshipped the Moon Maiden. He was threatened by my love for Isabel, by her love for me. When she died, curse the day, the hour, we each of us mourned bitterly. But Ketherick's pain could be touched by no aid, no boundary. He turned to wretched Shah, the Lady of Loss, for relief. And she whispered into his ear, poisoning his mind. He and his loathsome advisor, Balthazar, lured me into the Shadowfell, claimed they'd found someone in need of my aid. There, they trapped me in their infernal cage. I was killed, murdered, made dead over and over and over by justicias of every make and kind. I was reborn, for it is my nature. And Catherick fed upon my immortality all the while. But lo, the brute is dead. And we, we live!